Let me introduce you to regression through the data in the game. I go to customer orders. There are two sets of data here, plot job arrivals, plot rejected jobs. Job arrivals are those that we have accepted. Rejected job, rejected due to limit on our working process. Here in this data that I have, I have not rejected any job. If I had, I should add it to the job array. So I go to job array was, download it into an Excel sheet, enable content. So here I mark this data, insert scatter graph. I, I talk about three ways of doing regression, the easiest way, the worst way, and the best way. This is the easiest way. I right click on this, Add trend line, linear trend line, display equation on the chart, display R square. So everything is here. Here is our slope, slope of the line, and here is the intercept. And here is R square. It shows if this line is a good fit to this data. R square is between zero and one. If it is close to one, it's very good. Close to zero, not good. This was the easiest way. The worst way, data, data analysis. If you don't have data analysis, you can just add it exactly the same as the way you added solver. Data analysis, go down to regression. Where is your Y range here? That is my Y range. Where is your X range? Here is my X range. Do you want the output on a new sheet or on this sheet? I want on this sheet. I want it here. Okay. And the data is prepared. This is intercept. The same intercept as we had it here. This is slope. This is R square, the same R square as we had it here. This is multiple R. Multiple R is also called correlation, correlation coefficient. R square also is called coefficient of determination. R square is equal to correlation coefficient to the power of two. Multiple R is a square root of R square because the relationship could be positive or negative. In this case, the relationship is positive, but it could have been negative. So I should also write here sine of this one. Here it is positive, but if it was negative, I would have a negative sign of it. I can also go here and type equal to correlation corel. And for corel, it asks me for y values, comma, x values this way. And of course, this is equal to this to the power of 2. Coefficient of determination or r square moves from zero to one. Correlation coefficient goes from negative one to positive one. From zero to positive one, from negative one to positive one. This is coefficient of determination and this is correlation coefficient. Therefore, if I tell you which one shows a better relationship a coefficient of determination of 0.9 or a correlation coefficient of negative 0.99. Which one is better? This one is better while it is negative because if we square it, it will be a number very close to 1 compared to 0.9. Remember this, if I give you 
correlation coefficient to compare it with coefficient of determination you need to square correlation coefficient and then compare it because negative 0.99 correlation coefficient is as good as positive other things that we may consider in this table is we want this p-value to be as small as possible less than or equal to say 0.025 or even less than or equal to 0.001 the smaller the better the larger the better the larger the better larger but this one it's absolute value because negative 0.9 is as good as positive point why this is not a good approach because if I change my data here, if I make this 300, nothing happens in this table. Each time I change my data, I must recalculate this table. Now let's go for the best approach. Except equal to intercept of these data, comma, these are my y values and these are my x values that is the same thing we found over there now i come here slope equal to slope y values comma x values that is slope which we got however I could go here I could mark this a 4 lock it and then copy this down and then go here, mark this instead of intercept, you can type slope. Then I can copy this down, double click on it, and type RSQ. And I can double click on it, mark this ST, I really don't remember it. S T E Y X. Enter. This is R square, and this is standard error. Standard error is something like M S E. It's a little bit different, but we can just assume it as M S E. When we say we have the forecast for the next period, indeed, in moving average, in exponential smoothing, and in regression, that is average of forecast, and then we accompany average of forecast with standard deviation of forecast. This is standard deviation of forecast. Now, let's forecast for all periods equal to intercept and lock it plus slope and lock it times period so that is our forecast for period one and this is our forecast for period 51 52 and 53 now i can come here control shift down insert scatter graph and then i can copy here control shift down copy paste and that is my regression line our forecast for next period follows normal distribution its average is down here
for next period, for period 51, average is 5, about 5. And in the standard deviation, is this much, 1.7. That is more information about future. It was the case in moving average and exponential smoothing too. What we define as our forecast is indeed our average forecast. And then we have standard deviation in moving average. We did 1.25 MAD or square root of MSC. The same for exponential and this standard order also has some meaning similar to that MSE with a minor difference and that goes to degrees of freedom. Thank you very much for paying attention to this talk.